Hello, viewers, and welcome to another episode of Elections by Numbers. Today, we're talking about the volunteer state, Tennessee. Tennessee has about 3,800 documented caves, uh, which is the most of any state in the country, making it a spelunker's paradise. The county of Shelby, which contains the city Memphis, also has more horses per capita than any other county in the country. The volunteer state also sent more troops to fight in the American Civil War than any other state in the country uh, from either the North or the South. In this most recent Congress, Tennessee has uh, uh, nine congressional House districts, and seven of them are represented by Republicans, and two of them represented by Democrats. The two Democratic represented districts in the state are Tennessee's 5th and Tennessee's 9th, which uh, cover the uh, more urban parts of the state. Uh, Tennessee's 5th covers Nashville and Tennessee's 9th covers Memphis. How has the average Tennessee voter been trending and how they vote for a representative for the U.S. House? Let's take a look at uh, double line graph to figure that out. So looking at this graph, you'll notice the regular ups and downs that coincide with presidential election years versus midterm years, with Republicans holding a pretty consistent edge and widening uh, their margin of victory during presidential years. But then going from 2016 to 2018, as we've seen so many times in so many other states, we see Democrats really working to close that gap for the first time in many years. In fact, what's extra strange about this state is the fact that Democrats actually improved their numbers uh, in a midterm year versus the previous presidential year. I'm talking about 2016 going into 2018. However, Republicans also managed to uh, improve their turnout uh, during 2018 as well. They didn't surpass their numbers from 2016, which is which is uh, not something I was expecting or anyone was expecting, but they did vastly outperform uh, their turnout numbers from 2014, which was the previous uh, midterm cycle, leaving Tennessee Republicans with a still pretty uh, clear edge on uh, their Democratic counterparts. But that improvement on Democrats' end from 2016 to 2018 should not go unnoticed. All right, let's toss that graph aside. I'll tell you a little bit about the partisan leans of some of these districts now. I use the Cook Political Report's partisan voting index to determine uh, uh, how I think each district is going to uh, vote this November, and uh, the most centrist district of all nine of Tennessee's districts is actually the fifth, which covers Nashville. It has a partisan lean of plus seven into the uh, Democratic column when compared to the national average. However, Tennessee's fifth was not the closest uh, electoral outcome that we saw in 2018. That actually uh, went to uh, Tennessee's third district, which is uh, a much more partisan district according to Cook. Tennessee's third has a Cook PBI rating of uh, plus 18 into the Republican column, and the uh, Republican uh, candidate that year won by about a 29% margin of the vote, but that was the closest electoral outcome in the state that year. Actually, the Democratic incumbent in uh, Tennessee's fifth performed better uh, than the Republican incumbent in Tennessee's third. And I think the line graphs that we just saw largely reflected that when we saw Democratic uh, Democratic turnout increase greatly. Those numbers were surely mostly within uh, the districts, the fifth district and the ninth district. So because the most recent uh, electoral cycle saw the closest race with a nearly 30% uh, margin victory, I don't think any of these districts are gonna flip this November, do you? Tennessee is drawn out in a way that makes each, each respective district very partisan in the way that it votes for candidates. So no flips this November. Let's make that official and put it on our first map. Mark it. Up next, we have a Senate election in Tennessee. Incumbent Republican Senator Lamar Alexander is retiring at the conclusion of his term uh, after having served 18 years in the U.S. Senate, leaving an open seat for a new Republican candidate to jump in and face a Democratic challenger. The state primary for Tennessee is actually scheduled uh, for August 6th, which is coming up pretty soon, so there are no uh, official candidates in this race yet. The voters have yet to determine that. However, because there's no incumbent running for re-election in this race, we are not going to be considering uh, incumbent's approval rating in our calculations. So the way this is going to work out today is we're going to uh, be calculating a generic Republican versus a generic Democrat in the state of Tennessee while weighting uh, the strength of uh, Republican turnout versus Democratic turnout, as well as uh, voter turnout ratios. Speaking of voter turnout ratios, let's pull those up right now. So here we see some numbers that are pretty revealing, and I think actually a pretty reflective of what, of what we saw 
in uh, the line graphs that we looked at in the previous section. Basically, at the beginning of the decade, we saw uh, lower enthusiasm for Democratic senatorial candidates relative to Republican candidates in the state, which led to uh, Republican senators maintaining their seats, winning more elections. But later on in 2018, we saw Democratic senatorial candidate Phil Bredesen get a, a very large enthusiasm gap over his uh, Republican challenger, Marsha Blackburn, who of course would go on to win the seat that year. Marsha Blackburn was running up after uh, uh, former Republican Senator Bob Corker announced he was retiring two years ago. And actually for a time leading up to the 2018 midterms, uh, people had Tennessee as a pretty competitive race simply because of the candidate. Phil Bredesen was a, a former governor of the state of Tennessee from, uh, I believe, uh, 2003 to 2011, pretty popular governor, uh, but a Democrat running in a state that has historically elected uh, more Republicans in recent years. Marsha Blackburn, the Republican uh, challenger to Bredesen would actually go on to win the election in Tennessee in 2018 by about a 10% margin of the vote, despite having uh, a 20% deficit in enthusiasm according to these voter ratios. So um, this is just reflective of uh, the advantage that Republicans have in raw turnout numbers when it comes to House candidates. Okay, let's toss uh, those numbers aside that looks pretty good at first glance for Democrats when they have that upward trajectory and uh, enthusiasm versus Republicans. Now we're going to project into 2020 by trying to determine whether a generic Republican or a generic Democrat can win in the state of Tennessee this year. So for that, we turn to Polbot. Polbot, let's take our two variables in this case and calculate how this is gonna turn out. Okay, uh, Polbot saying a Republican will win but by only 6.5% margin of the vote? Okay, I disagree with this one. I have to say, based on instinct, what I've seen over the past couple of decades, I think this is, gonna, this is a way too close prediction. I think the reason we're seeing a value less than 10% or even less than 15% is because of uh, Phil Bredesen's uh, great turnout numbers in 2018 relative to previous Democrats. And that skews the voter ratio uh, values slightly upward in a way that I think is is too beneficial for Democrats. It's highly unlikely that uh, uh, Tennessee will put up another candidate as popular as Phil Bredesen was two years ago. Therefore, in, in the real world, I think this will be more like a 15% margin victory, but uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, regardless, we're having uh, another Republican senator winning the state this November, so let's make that official and put it on our senatorial map. Mark it. And now it is time to talk about the presidential election of 2020 starring President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden. Tennessee is a state that last voted for a Democratic presidential candidate in 1996 when they voted for Bill Clinton a second time. They actually also voted for him in 1992. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't also point out that maybe partially the reason for that was because of his vice president, Al Gore, who was a former senator and representative for the state of Tennessee uh, prior to winning on the uh, 1992 ticket. More recently, we saw Tennessee break for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton in 2016 by 26 percent margin of the vote. What I found funny about Tennessee is uh, when I look back uh, to 1992 when they voted for Bill Clinton for the first time and come all the way back to the present from that year, every four years, every presidential election cycle, Republicans have improved their margin of victory. So that's a 24-year run of Republicans improving on Democrats every time. So Donald Trump might have a lot of work ahead of him if he expects to win Tennessee again this year by a larger margin than he previously did, 26%. That would be a very lofty goal and a very good outcome for Republicans as a whole. So to figure out if that's even possible, let's take a look at some more voter turnout ratios uh, to see how uh, Tennessee voters vote for presidents. Okay, and here we're seeing some numbers that uh, look slightly better for Democrats than Republicans, though not by very much. And in fact, both the candidates uh, from 2012, Barack Obama, from the Democrats and Mitt Romney from the Republicans had better enthusiasm uh, than uh, both candidates that would follow in their footsteps four years later, that being Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But remember, these values are relative to raw house turnout numbers. So a 120.58 uh, percent uh, voter ratio that Barack Obama enjoyed in 2012 versus uh, Mitt Romney's 106.72% uh, was not nearly enough to secure the state's 11 electoral college votes for Obama that year. The difference in these ratios would have to be uh, much uh, much, much larger for these to have any sort of impact 
uh, in any sort of meaningful way for Democratic uh, presidential candidates. Okay, let's toss that aside. We know now that uh, Democrats have a slight edge on presidential uh, House voter ratios, but that Republicans have a very clear edge on raw House turnout numbers. Lastly, we have to consider the approval rating of the incumbent, in this case, President Trump. And in Tennessee, he is uh, generally approved of with a plus 10 uh, point approval rating. Specifically, I believe 53% uh, of uh, Tennesseans approve of him versus 43% uh, that do not. So that's all the figures we need. Now we can turn to Polbot to calculate how this is going to turn out for Trump and Biden in November. Polbot, let's crunch those numbers. And there we have our result. It's no surprise that Republicans are going to win the state of Tennessee, but it is by a, a significantly lower margin than Trump won the state four years ago. It's only 15.06%. So after starting a run of improving numbers, uh, consistently improving margins of victory since 1992, uh, this is where it ends for Republicans. They will still win the state, but uh, by about 11% gap uh, more narrow than they had in 2016. Ultimately, that doesn't matter though. Uh, Trump's still going to get 11 electoral college votes from the volunteer state. Let's make that official and put it on our presidential map. Mark it. So all the election results are in for the state of Tennessee, and there are no real surprises except for the much lower than expected margin of victory uh, for the uh, senators. Let's talk briefly about the future of the volunteer state by looking at an old line graph and two new ones. First, let's look again at the uh, raw house turnout graph that I was showing you uh, towards the beginning of the video. I wanna show you specifically those slope values that you can see in both of those equations. That's the value preceding X in both of those. So for Republicans, it is that 77.4, and for Democrats, it is that 62.5. What that means is, on average, every two years, when you look at the last decade as a whole, Republicans have been adding 77,400 voters onto their rolls uh, every two years versus the Democrats adding 62,500 votes every two years. So we are seeing turnout increase every two years as expected as this country continues to grow. And it favors Republicans slightly, very slightly. I mean, that's only a, what is, that's about a, a 15,000 voter difference over the last 10 years. The reason these slope values are even competitive at all, I think is simply because of the, the jump from 2016 to 2018 on Democrats' end. If they had voted in 2018 at, at normal levels like they did in 2014 or even 2010, they would have a slope value that would be much lower, much closer to zero even, possibly even negative. And we would see uh, Tennessee Republicans just running away in increasing that gap. Uh, between them and uh, their Democratic counterparts. But because of Democratic backlash in 2018, we see much more competitive slope values that still slightly favor Republicans at this point. Next, I wanna show you these estimates for the rate of increase or decrease in those voter ratios that I was using in uh, my two previous calculations. First, the senatorial to House voter ratio estimates. I think, like I said earlier, uh, the reason that this is skewed so heavily in favor of Democrats is because of the candidate in 2018, Phil Bredesen, a popular governor with high name recognition in the state. Democrats in Tennessee just did the best job they could do in nominating him for that seat. However, his uh, opponent, Marsha Blackburn, went uh, heavy on Trump's message, which uh, resonated with uh, Tennessee's Republican voters in a way that carried her across the finish line by uh, over 10% margin. So it seems unlikely to me that uh, Democrats will continue their upward trajectory at this rate, but that remains to be seen. Next, looking at the presidential to House voter ratios, we're seeing uh, values that are negative for both parties. This is because of what I said earlier uh, about uh, Obama and Romney both having more enthusiasm uh, than uh, Clinton, uh, Hil that is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump respectively. Therefore, this graph would have you believe that uh, Biden and Trump uh, in this this, up, this upcoming election would also have even lower values than uh, were received in 2016, but that remains to be seen. What I might take away from uh, these, these values is that uh, the Democrats' value is decreasing at a higher rate than Republicans, which means uh, Republicans are closing that gap slightly in enthusiasm in their favor, even though they're still uh, uh, slightly below Democrats. However, their, raw, their advantage in raw voter turnout uh, more than makes up for this. Okay, let's toss that aside. Um, my final consensus on Tennessee is that it is still becoming slightly, slightly more Republican, but that it may be hitting an inflection point very, very soon. This is a state that voted for Donald Trump heavily in 2016 by about 26% margin of the vote. Two years later, they sent Marsha Blackburn to the Senate who uh, was really, really reflecting Trump's message. We saw a surge in turnout 
from both parties in Tennessee. Let's not let's not uh, neglect the uh, the higher turnout numbers than expected for Republicans as well. And also remember that this state still has a net approval rating of this president in a time when he is a uh, to say the least, uh, in slight political trouble at this point. Tennessee is very, very quickly nearing its inflection point to start to come back to the center. But as of right now, looking at the last 10 years, still slightly uh, becoming more Republican. And that just about does it for our latest episode of Elections by Numbers. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in today. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button to get updates on new content as it becomes available. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. I'm also on Twitter, and I update that account with which state I am covering next ahead of the scheduled release date. So if you want to stay ahead of the curve, please give me a follow on Twitter, and that link is in the description. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for voting, and I'll see you next time.